It's day eight of our 16 day trip on Route 66. So we've detoured a little bit south off of Route 66. Here, not too far, but we are at Jack Sizemore's Traveland RV Museum. I am really looking forward to checking out this place. 1941 Westcraft with a full-size radio and a record player. It is surprisingly spacious inside actually uh you know compared to you have to duck when you come through the door but once you're in here this is really nice nineteen thirty six alma sat in a barn from nineteen fifty five this is it, original condition, never restored. Wow. Yeah, it is quite, it's quite spacious. You know, one of the first tent trailers ever made. This one from 1937. Owned by one family for its entire life. Nice display of old Coleman stoves, lanterns, probably kerosene jugs. 1962 Airstream Bambi. It's got everything. You got a little bathroom and shower, cooktop. perfect for a couple of people. And what's that right there? It's the world's oldest Airstream from 1931, been owned by the same family the entire time. There's your proof. Airstream 1935 Torpedo, oldest existing Airstream in the world. Check out those little tiny tail lights. One big stop lamp in the back. <laughs> that is just incredible. There you go. Dual propane tanks, portal porthole windows. Tons of an of awards. I can't believe it has a sink. <laughs> With a really neat looking faucet no yeah. less. They don't look a heck of a lot different now. Wow. And remember the movie with Robin Williams, RV, from 2006? This is the bus that was used in that film. This is inside the bus that was used in the movie RV. The movie, of course, was filmed, a lot of it was filmed up in Alberta. And this is the bus that they used. Check out that cockpit. Wouldn't that be fun to rock it down the road in? Well, I don't think you'd rock it, but you know what I mean. And what do we have here? But the first ever Winnebago Itasca. Built in August of 74. It's a 1975 model year. Serial number one. Okay, so check it out. This is original mileage, 6,094. It was only ever really used for promotional purposes, so it didn't get a lot of driving action. There were some upgrades made in 2003, such as it has a backup camera in the middle of the dash now, but otherwise it's pretty much all original. Rear bath model, small sink. That porcelain stove was also an upgrade from the original, according to the sheet inside here. But, wow. 1975 Itasca serial number one. 70 Avion. Look at this jack stand system. I would hate to have to try and get parts for that now, let me tell you. Hmm. 
Not bad. A great little weekend unit. Pretty, uh, pretty tight quarters, but considering you're living on the back of a pickup truck, what can you expect? 1973 Winnebago. With the buddy passenger seat, so you can fit two people on the passenger side. Nineteen seventy six Argozi. Well, this one's quite spacious, actually. Nineteen seventy three Starcraft tent trailer in the green color. Nineteen sixty six Kenskill. Beautiful trailer. This one was completely restored and uh, absolutely gorgeous. Again, check out that cockpit. Oh, wow. So this Airstream Bambi, it says the fridge, the, uh, the stove, and the bathroom have never been used. So they are completely original, as are the curtains and the bedspreads. And check out those mattresses, how they had to be made to fit the curve at the, uh, at the uh, front of the unit. Isn't that amazing? Wow, what a place. This, you know... I was going to say, you can't beat the uh, the value for this place, especially given that the admission is free, so... It's an amazing collection. Check out the Bob Sizemore RV Museum in Amarillo, Texas. For sure. Alright, this is a place I have no idea what to expect. It's either going to be really boring for me or really interesting. Either way, this is the American Quarter Horse Hall of Fame and Museum. Amarillo, Texas just steps off the interstate. Let's go inside. This building is amazing inside. Well, the introduction to the American Quarter Horse seems like a good place to start. It's very cool. Move the display. It's like a portable x-ray for horses. Yes. <laughs> That's definitely a must visit for anyone involved in the American quarter horse industry. I had a quarter horse when I was in high school, so a lot of the names of the foundation sires were familiar, and they had a lot of neat memorabilia. It is also interesting maybe for non-horse people because they have pretty good exhibits about the parts of the horse and horse care and different types of saddles, so a little something for everyone. It's not a huge place, but it's very well done and worth a stop. Welcome to Vega, Texas, and as has been a theme all throughout Texas, it's really windy here, so uh, let's go see what we can find, but you probably uh, will end up not having much audio from here on just because of the, uh, the wind noise. There we go. A windy look at the Magnolia service station. 
from 1924 here in Vega, Texas. A little shot inside the service station, restored with a few artifacts and things. You can see, perhaps you can see there, restored in 2003. So. Is this original to Vega? Uh, yes. Hugh Knox bought this years ago, and then he had it painted gray and red. Oh. And then uh, a few years back, they painted it black. Okay. So, yeah, then we got it again. 1923 Model T. More artifacts in the back. This place is an amazingly awesome hidden gem. So, I mean, this was very cool. We found this completely by accident. We were across the street at the uh, Restored Vegas service station, saw a sign in the window telling us to come over here and check it out. It's a really nice display of a lot of uh, local small town artifacts here in Vega, Texas. Check it out if you're in the area. All right, well, it's day eight of our 16-day trip on Route 66, and uh, that puts us at the midpoint. And depending on how you measure it, Adrian, Texas is the midpoint of Route 66. Some say Vega, back where we just were. Um, Adrian has decided to really own the midpoint things with stripes on the road and th whatnot. I mean, let's be honest, it changes all the time as roads get realigned and depending on which route or which alignment of Route 66 you take. So midpoint's up for debate, but this is uh, Adrian, Texas. So let's go take a look. I didn't actually see her as I walked by, so I kind of jumped. We haven't crossed yet, but wait for it. And now we're into the second half of our trip and I'm depressed. You want to do your turkey dance again? <laughs> Some of these cars we've been uh, leapfrogging back and forth since uh, we left Chicago, really. All right, so after lunch at the midpoint, we're ready to get back on the road, stop in, have the pie, have the fried bologna sandwich. You won't regret it. We'll see you in a bit. All right, so a bit of a bittersweet occasion. We are about to drive across the midpoint of our trip. There it is, and I'm going ahead, and we are completely on the second half of our trip now. So checking the distance on the odometer, the halfway point, we are at 5,342.7 kilometers since leaving home. Welcome to one of the most iconic ghost towns on all of Route 66. This is Glen Rio, Texas. Now everything here is pretty much signed as private property, so we're not going to be doing any exploring inside the buildings, but we can certainly see a lot of them from the road here. weird to think 
that we're just like less than a mile off the interstate because this location feels super desolate. And it's also amazing to think that at one time this was a really happening town. And then uh, as evidenced by the fact that Route 66 through here is actually a four lane divided highway. It's paved at least for a few more miles. This is pure Route 66 right here. This is one of those feelings you get, or one of those places where you really get the feeling of the ghost town part of Route 66. We're out here near Endy, New Mexico, and uh, we just came across this site while uh, looking for a geocache. Isn't this incredible? Like, there's an old windmill there, there's the uh, old clothesline still in place, the remains of a truck. You know, clearly this was a homestead at one point, and um, there's the clothesline on the left. You know, clearly this was an old homestead. You can easily imagine somebody having to pack up and leave uh, just to the left of the windmill there. There's an old wooden boxcar that was likely used as storage. But, you know, during the Dust Bowl, when everybody had to load up their stuff in their cars and head west down Route 66, this is the sort of place you can imagine them having to leave. This is a very... John Steinbeck Grapes of Wrath feeling place. Absolutely incredible place. So quiet, just, you know, a couple miles off the interstate, but worlds and worlds away. It is really, really hot out here, 30 plus degrees Celsius. I know there's lots of wind. We saw some snake skins on the road, so we know there's lots of critters out here that we have to watch for as we uh, walk and explore. Uh, Wish we had more time. Apparently the ND Cemetery is about a mile or so uh, northwest of here, but uh, we're, we're not going to be able to take the time to check that out, but we're going to carry on and we're working our way towards Tucumcari, New Mexico tonight. Old wooden bridge here on Dirt 66, right next to the uh, remains of an old wooden railway trestle. The uh, railway has been long since abandoned, but there's still some remnants of it, and then we're finding them here on Dirt 66 between Endy and San Juan. Hey, Dan here again. I uh, had to switch to my uh, little cooler desert style cap. Now we try and bring you, you know, different things, different offbeat attractions, whatever. This one's kind of uh, not really an attraction, but an interesting piece of history. We're just south of Route 66. Uh, about a kilometer off the old Mother Road on a north-south alignment here. And this bridge is actually built out of an iron ore car that once belonged to the uh, Southern Pacific Railroad. So the bridge is not in use anymore. The road bypasses passes it over there. But I just thought it was really cool that this old rail car once served as a bridge across the San Juan Creek here. Time to check out TP Curios here in Tucumcari, New Mexico. So TP Curio started out as a Gulf gas station and it was built in the early 1940s. When Route 66 was widened through Tucumcari, they lost the space to host the uh, gas pumps. So the, instead of serving gas, it kind of got converted into a souvenir shop and it remains one of the most famous sites along Route 66. Hmm. 
Hey, Pop. Oh, yes. Hello. It's Tucum Carry tonight. We have reached the Blue Swallow Motel. Yes. As we were driving up, we could see the sign getting bigger and bigger. As we got closer, we started getting really excited.